tells you something about somebody else, make sure you verify because information can get lost in transit. That stayed with me. Another thing he taught me, one, the first job, the first paid job I got after I graduated, it was in a hospital. I remember the name of the first hospital, Fanny Royal Hospital in Port Harcourt. Um, my boss was a tax master. He, he worked us. Not just me, I was his manager, the manager of the hospital. So there were a lot of nurses working in the hospital. And so when I went to visit my parents, after two months thereabout, my father looked at me and said, I thought you said you just got a job. I said, yes. And he said, why are you thinking like this? I said, it's the job. He said, well, you should know that there is nothing that you will eat that is so delicious that will make you swallow your teeth. Um, he said it in Igbo, so I don't know how to translate it in English. It might not make a lot of meaning to you if you don't understand Igbo. He said, So, 
what that means that you can there is nothing that is so valuable that you can neglect your health for that. And I I resigned from the job eventually, but that was after a while. And then another thing he taught me one day I went out and came back and he asked me where I went to. And it was a place I was supposed to go, but I didn't tell anybody when I was leaving the house. And he told me, don't ever go anywhere without telling someone that is in the house where you are going to. I really wish I'm practicing everything he taught me, but it seems I'm not. Um, did I mention that I was his favorite son? <laughs> well, you can't. You just have to believe me, right? There is no way you can verify that. There's no, nobody to ask. So you have to take me by my word that I was really his favorite son. I know it. I know I was his favorite son. Um, so one day, um, something happened. I was, I was having some pain, you know? So that made me, I tried not to eat so late at night. I tried to eat early. And this is the last one I'm going to share with us. I tried to eat early. So um, my mom was cooking, and I knew she had finished cooking, and I was expecting my food, and she wasn't bringing it, and it was getting late. And I told myself, once it gets to certain time, I will not eat again. So, and it got to um, that time. I think it was around 9 p.m. or 8.30 p.m. around that time. And I said I wasn't going to eat. My father laughed. Oh. And he called me and he said, um, um, I thought he said you're a Christian. I said, yes. He said, and you are refusing food for another person's wife. So let me teach you a lesson. Don't ever refuse your wife's food. Whatever happens, make sure you eat your food. And... Then I wasn't even married when he told me this. I wasn't even thinking about marriage. So when I got married, well, you can ask my wife. I don't refuse my food. I make sure I ask for my food. Even when we are fighting, post and unquote, especially the organic food. And she would think, oh, what? I thought we are fighting. No, my father taught me not to say no to my food. Um, Why do people grieve when someone passed? My father lived a good life. He lived old. He was 81. Um, David in the Bible lived till 70, so my father had a decade extra. But we still grieve, right? So why do people grieve? Um, Jacob lived to 125 years, but Joseph still cried bitterly when he passed even though he wasn't sure he was going to see Jacob again after um, he was sold into Egypt. So why do people grieve? You know, when something like this happened to you, you suddenly become a philosopher. So I started thinking about why do people grieve? Why am I grieving so much for my father? Even though it was like expected because he was sick for a while. And I'm going to read First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, But I would not tell you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, like my father is sleeping right now, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So if you see me crying, just console me. Just know that I won't be sorrowing like I'm hopeless. I do have hope because I know where my father is. But I will still be crying once in a while, maybe around you. <laughs>